today's reading is from Luke 5, 27 to 32. Uh, the words are from the NIV. It's titled, Jesus Calls Levi and Eats with Sinners. After this, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector by the name of Levi, sitting at his tax booth. Follow me, Jesus said to him. And Levi got up, left everything, and followed him. Then Levi held a great banquet for Jesus at his house, and a large crowd of tax collectors and others were eating with them. But the Pharisees and teachers of the law who belonged to their sect complained to his disciples. Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus answered them, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning again. In life, we face changes. Our relationships, our job, our health, our financial status, where we live and who we live with, they all change, don't they? In other words, we continually and inevitably enter on familiar territories in our lives, and sometimes we will feel lost in them. When we, feel, when we feel like we are swept toward a new destination in life, we would say, is there anything that remains unchanged in this life? Is there anything that can lead me through all the ups and downs of life? In life's unfamiliar territories, what is it that you and I can hold on to? This morning, are you in a new, unfamiliar territory? The Bible says, in the Bible, Jesus says, follow me 13 times. And he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and whoever believes in me will never be lost. Hallelujah. Then who is this man named Jesus that so confidently says to us, follow me? How could this man who lived on earth 2,000 years ago be so certain and say that I am the way? And is Jesus truly the one who will lead us through the ups and downs and twists and turns of life? This morning we are going to look at that. In today's story, we meet a man named Levi, who is also known to us as Matthew. He is a Jewish man, and he is a tax collector. As we know, in the first century, in the, uh, the land of Palestine was a part of a um, Roman Empire, the Roman Empire. During the day, all the other ethnic groups in the empire were heavily taxed for the wealth, welfare of Romans. The tax collectors of the day were rich, but they were regarded as traitors for that reason. The man in today's story has two names. Levi is his Hebrew name, meaning united or welcomed, and his Greek name Matthew means the gift of God, but sadly, as opposed to the meaning of two names, this man is unwelcomed, despised, outcast, who had a lot of money. And we see this in the story, that Jesus goes to this man and says, follow me. Then what does it mean to follow Jesus? Exploring this story together this morning, we will see three things about following Jesus. Would that be okay? As we begin, would you join me in prayer? 
Jesus, we thank you for bringing us as your people this morning. For you have timely word for our lives, our situations, our struggles, and our hurts. And we bring ourselves to you before the word. May the word of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight. In the name of our beautiful Savior, we pray this. Amen. Some time ago, I read a book written by a Christian philosopher named Hyung Seok Kim. He is a professor at a university in Korea. What is interesting about him is that he is 101 years old, but he still teaches and writes. In his latest book, he talks about the topic, what is a happy, fulfilling life? And he says something like this. Those who live a happy, fulfilling life have such an attitude toward life that they would continually seek to grow and learn in service to those around them. He says how old or young we are doesn't really matter. What makes our life happy and fulfilling is our attitude toward it. Those who live a happy, fulfilling life pursue and live to fulfill their higher purpose. Now, what do we think about the philosophy professors saying? The Bible tells us that following Jesus makes our life happy and fulfilling as it leads us to a higher purpose. Then some of us might ask, how does following Jesus lead us to a higher purpose? Now suppose there is a beautiful cake on this pulpit, and we do not know who made it. But by tasting it, we could probably tell what the cake is made of and how it is made. But only the person who made the cake would know why it was made. In the same way, we could say, I know my purpose only when we meet our creator. And Jesus says this, if you have seen me, You have seen the Father. In other words, Jesus claims that he is the way to our creator. And we know his claim is true as he rose from the dead. Here is what I find very interesting. In Jesus' day, in his culture, when children graduated school, they had to find a teacher to be further educated. After school, the kids would go and find a rabbi. Then they would ask the rabbi, can I follow you and learn from you? If the rabbi says yes, then they would become a student and continue learning. Otherwise, they would start working. But here in the story, who is asking that question? In the story, it is Jesus, a rabbi, who goes to a student and he asks the question, Levi, will you follow me? What it's saying is that Jesus chose Levi. Why would he do that? Jesus had a plan and purpose for his life. In the same way, friends, Jesus chose you. He chose us. He has a plan and purpose for your life. In Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5, it says this. Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. Think about this with me for a moment. When we enter an unfamiliar new territory in our lives, we would feel lost and afraid. In the new unfamiliar territory, it is then easy for us to be 
quick to draw a conclusion and say, okay, because now I am in this situation, my life is this or that. But here, look at what Jesus says to us when we enter an unfamiliar territory in our lives. He says, follow me. Follow me. What does this mean? Don't be so quick to draw a conclusion. <laughs> there is a hope. God has a plan. He has a purpose that is bigger than our current problems. It means he is with you. Follow me, he says. The next verse gives us the second point. The text says, when Levi heard Jesus' words, he got up, left everything, and followed him. What does it mean to follow Jesus? Does it mean to give up our jobs and our family responsibilities to be preachers and missionaries? Looking at the story, we see it means something deeper than that. Would you think about this with me for a moment? The text tells us that in a very little while, Levi holds a great party, inviting a large crowd of his friends. He still has the wealth to do that. Then what does it mean that Levi left everything? I think that it means that the goal of his life changed. Here the word banquet often refers to a joyful event. Levi now has so much joy in following Jesus, he no longer goes after money. Money is no longer his goal as Jesus is now his greatest wealth. He now lives for him. Levi earns to use his money for Jesus. Some time ago, I heard this story. About eight years ago, this young man had an accident. It was the day he got a job. To celebrate, he and his friends had a party on a rooftop. Unfortunately, he fell from the rooftop and he broke his neck. As a result, he became paralyzed from his neck down. He began rehab and his friends and family began prayer meetings for him. Thankfully, his recovery was speedy and miraculous. As opposed to what the doctor told him, he could move his neck, then his arms and his fingers, and people thought that he would walk again, but that was it. His legs were not getting any better. One night, this young man fell into deep despair and was praying. After a little while, he felt peace filling up his heart, and he became certain that his legs were not going to recover, but that God had a plan for his life. And he became certain that God would use him as he was to bring hope to others. He said after that night, his legs were no longer a problem to him, but they became a gift from God. After the night, he began to visit others in his wheelchair, in his rehab ward. Then he went to different hospitals to meet young people who were injured by accidents like him. He began to pray for them, take them out for coffee, and share his, his story with them, and he began to mentor them. His disabled legs became the bridge that led him to others. His wheelchair became his testimony. Today, over 500,000 people subscribe to his YouTube channel and he continues to work with and for disabled young people. Was the accident a good thing? No, absolutely not. Accidents are terrible. I hope and pray that no one in this room would go through anything like that. But for this young man, God had a bigger plan God's plan was bigger than his problem. 
His pain became a gift from God. A Christian writer, Tom Patterson, says something profound. He said this, We are all given a gift from God. Our individuality, our life is a sacred trust. And what we do with the gift is our gift to God. Leaving everything to follow Jesus doesn't mean that we will disregard all our experiences, wealth, skills, and talents, nor will we be free from challenges in this life. No, no, no. But it means that we would see all of that as God's gift and that we would use them for greater things, for God's work to build up others. Hallelujah. I love what Jesus does with Levi's life. Think about this with me. Levi used to be a social outcast because of his dirty money. But he now uses it to throw a party. And he invites people to his house so that they would also meet Jesus who healed him. There is so much joy he found in Jesus that he is now free from greed. Jesus has turned his pain into a gift that he now uses to build up others. A few weeks ago, sorry, a few years ago, I was asked to speak at a youth camp. I said to the organizer, look, are you sure about this? English is my second language. I read notes when I speak. I am not very good communicator for young people. The organizer said, that is exactly why we need you there. <laughs> I was slightly offended. But they said, we are an immigrant church community. And a lot of young people in our congregation are from overseas. And they will relate to you. They will connect with you. So I went. At the camp, all that I did was speak about how miserable and painful my journey has been in Australia. And yet how God continually showed up in my life and who Christ is. That was all that I did. But the Holy Spirit moved at the camp through the confession of my weakness and God's strength. There were about 80 kids and more than 30 kids gave their lives to Jesus at that camp. At the end of the camp, there was a time for the young people to get up to say what they got out of the camp. And one by one, they came up to the front with the tears in their eyes, and they said, if God did what he did in the preacher's life, I am sure he will do it in my life too. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus. <clears throat> Jesus says, take up your cross every day and follow me. What does that mean? To follow Jesus is paradoxical. It is beautifully painful. The journey is lonely, but it is glorious. To follow Jesus is paradoxical. It has to be because God's strength shines through our weakness. Friends, there is a reason that God has placed you in the new territory at this very moment. Though it may feel painful, Jesus turns our pain into a gift. This morning, what is your story? What is your pain? Have you failed at something? Jesus says, take up your cross every day and follow me. Then I will turn the pain into a gift. There is a banquet that only you can host in this world. And with Jesus, you will use it to make others rich. There is a specific and unique contribution that only you will make in this world. If you have a pain, that means you are one, one step closer to God's gift. Paul says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Each person is given something to do that shows who God is. This morning, if you know what your gift is, then how are you using it for God's glory? 
Every person who is healed holds a body, don't they? And every person who is born again of God's spirit and restored by Jesus is given a gift to throw a party, to have a ministry. Take up the cross. Take up your pain and let us follow him, friends. God's strength will shine through your weakness. Lastly, what does it mean to follow Jesus? When the Pharisees and religious leaders rebuke Jesus' disciples, asking why they are eating and drinking with the tax collectors, what does Jesus say? Jesus says, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. This is a remarkable statement, isn't it? Who other than God can forgive anyone's sin? What would Levi have thought when hearing this? At that moment, Levi would have realized that Jesus is not merely a teacher, but God himself who forgives sins and gives eternal life. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. It is said in John 3.16. Hallelujah. Last Sunday, after the service, Gabby and I went to see Marjorie and say goodbye to her. She was wonderful. She said she knew where she was going and she was prepared. She and her husband, John, Gabby and I joined our hands and we prayed together. Then I read the scriptures. I read from Isaiah chapter 43 and it goes like this. This is what the Lord says. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through fire, you will not be burned. The flame will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God. You are precious and honored in my sight, and I love you. As I was reading the scripture, I saw Marjorie raising her hands and I heard her saying, Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Marjorie held on to Jesus till the end. This morning, we began with a question. Is there anything that remains unchanged in this life and can lead us through the turns and twists of this life? Marjorie had the answer. She had found the answer and she lived by the answer. To follow Jesus means to have that answer. Jesus says, follow me. He says, I am the beginning and the end. To follow Jesus means to hold on to him until the end. For him, for in him, there is eternal life. When Jesus died on the cross, he took all our sins, all our pain, all our regrets, all our failures, all our guilt, and all our shame, and he died in our place. He died the death we deserved, but three days later, he rose from the dead so that you and I will have confidence in his finish the work on the cross as long as we live in this world and have eternal life that he promises to us. To follow Jesus is to believe in him till the end, knowing his promise and knowing that heaven is our home. Hallelujah. It is to look to him until the end as we are carried by the love and grace poured into our hearts through his spirit day by day. Jesus said, it is finished. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. To follow Jesus is to trust till the end and to know his love that is beyond this life. This morning, do you feel somewhat lost in your new territory? 
follow Jesus. Look to him. Hold on to him. He has overcome the world. The one who is in you is greater than the world. Look to Jesus Christ. rose from the dead and he is now with you. Even death is swallowed up in his victory. Hallelujah. Follow Jesus. Fix your eyes on him, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. Then he will carry us till the end. Amen. Amen and amen. And let us pray.